Welcome to Tea with Erping. I'm Erping Zhang. Let me ask you this. What does it take to be a hero in a society like China, which is ruled by a communist dictatorship? How hard is it to tell the truth and uphold morals when the entire state comes down on you? Well, let's explore it today. Since January, we have been praising a Chinese whistleblower, Dr. Li Wenliang who died from the virus that he spoke about. But there's another Chinese doctor that very few people know about, who was even more brave. He played a key role in informing us about a previous pandemic that we know as SARS. His name was Jiang Yanyun. In November 2002, we had the first SARS patient in China's Guangdong. But by April, the Chinese officials still revealed very little about the virus. They claimed that there were only a few cases in Beijing. But Jiang Yanyun, a doctor at a military hospital in Beijing, knew this was a gross understatement. Because in Beijing alone, there were at least 100 patients. He first tried reaching out to state media, but they ignored him. However, the Wall Street Journal and the other foreign media decide to run the story. It turns out the action of one man had a huge impact. What happens next? Chinese officials spoke and sacked the health minister and the Beijing mayor. The reported infection numbers jumped tenfold, and 20,000 people got quarantined. Action was taken, and the world's eyes were on China like never before. For those who haven't heard of Dr. Li Wenliang, the COVID story is very similar. In December, hospitals were alarmed to see a sudden surge of flu-like patients. Dr. Li Wenliang, like many other doctors in Wuhan, noticed this. He saw a report about patients with SARS-like illness and shared this with his peers on social media. This is really dangerous, he told them. A few days later, police summoned him. They accused him of spreading rumors, and he had to sign a statement to apologize for his mistakes. One month later, in February, he got infected and passed away, before the birth of his second baby. Now, let's go a little deeper. Dr. Lee's story is indeed tragic, but to me, he was an accidental whistleblower. Yet Dr. Jiang Yanyun from SARS showed true courage. Why do I say that? First, where is Dr. Jiang now? After he became known as a SARS whistleblower, he tried to use this fame for good. He advocated for the pro-democracy students who were killed on Tiananmen Square about 30 years ago. He was punished, arrested several times. And in February, we heard the news that he was put under house arrest. But over all these years, he didn't stop trying to speak the truth. How many people can act like this? In my mind, this is a true hero. Chinese social media today runs a list of trigger words and monitors users for the Communist Party. You could share anything that pleased the authorities. Cheer Hong Kong police for suppressing pro-democracy protesters. But if you want to speak the truth, about Tiananmen Massacre, Falun Gong, all about a virus like Dr. Li Wenliang, you get immediately punished. You are not supposed to share truth with anyone, not even your peers. Li Wenliang is just one victim of this party system and its culture of lying. And his tragedy in this virus cover up is just a drop in the bucket. So what is this CCP culture? What does it really mean? Over the years, the CCP has fostered a culture of lies. When the party was established in 1921, it formed a department of propaganda right away. Over the decades, this Orwellian propaganda machinery has poisoned the minds of Chinese people, and now the rest of the world. In China today, the lower officials are cheating the top, and the top is covering up. Let me give you an example. Before coming to America, I once served as a tour guide in Beijing for foreign visitors. We always stopped by a people's commune called the Evergreen 
to see how happily the Chinese farmers lived in the communist system. Even the First Lady Pat Nixon went there in 1979, but what these foreign visitors did not know, it was actually a setup. More amazingly, when current Chinese Premier Li Keqiang was the Communist Party chief of Liaoning province, he told the U.S. Ambassador Clark Rent that the GDP numbers were man-made and unreliable. Basically, even Li himself doesn't trust what officials told him. From the local authorities to the central government, the numbers are probably cooked up. So is everyone cheating everyone from top down and also bottom up? But who suffers the consequences in all of this? It is the Chinese people and every one of us. SARS killed around 800 people worldwide. And this time around, it is much more severe because of China's mishandling 1.5 to million people have died. Confucius said, by looking at the past, you gain something new. As we brace for a second wave of the pandemic, let's hold to the truth for our own sake, so that such tragedies won't happen again. As Mary Lou Heiss once said, a simple cup of tea is far from a simple matter. So stay safe. Until next time, Peace and tea be with you.